Is losing out the rest of the games for the Pittsburgh Steelers the approach they should take? Why are the fans calling for this team to continue to stumble here in 2023? Welcome back to Mike Drop Sports, everybody. I'm Jason. Let's talk about this fan base and what some fans want this team to do here. Some fans are calling for this team to just slide the rest of the way, lose out. Some say this team doesn't deserve to win another game. But what does that do for this team? What kind of benefits does that provide this football team? In my eyes, I think it provides really no huge benefit. I think that this team should try to win and win the rest of its games and still try to get into the playoffs. Yes, they're in about the 10th seed right now. They're in the hunt, still mathematically eligible for the playoffs. They're going to need some help, and they're going to need to win the remainder of their games. But there's Pittsburgh Steelers fans in my comments saying, hey, this team doesn't deserve to be in the playoffs. They don't deserve to have this or that. This team needs to lose out. Some fans are saying it's because they hope that if they lose the rest of their games, that that would get Mike Tomlin fired. Or if they lose the rest of their games, that they'll get a better draft pick. Let's start there with that. Do you call a 15th or 16th pick? Probably. If they would lose the rest of the way out, that's probably where they would sit, about 15th or 16th in the NFL draft. Does that really scream out to you that the Steelers are going to be able to secure a top-notch player? Yes, it gives them a better chance. I agree. But is that really what you want to be shooting for? Is that really what you want to be hoping for? I think when you're picking in the first round, you have a chance. It's a crapshoot. You, you don't know what you're going to get. You could get a superstar, or you could invest a lot of high draft capital on a guy that's going to fail. I mean, it's a 50-50 chance. Nobody knows. Yeah, you pick everything out here, you take educated guesses, you have the scouts go everywhere, you try to really go through the process and figure out who the best player is, but nothing's a guarantee in the NFL draft. And I would rather, if it were me, not play for draft picks, not play for draft pick seeding, uh, none of that. I think if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers, you have to try to continue to win. Not only does sliding the rest of the way to try to be 15th or 16th pick in the NFL draft. Um, but you're going to destroy something inside that building. There's a young core on, on that offense right now. There's young quarterback. There's young players. There's young receivers, uh, running backs. There's just young guys, impressionable guys like Broderick Jones, Kenny Pickett, Jalen Warren, George Pickens, Calvin Austin, uh, just to name a few. And if you go and continue to lose, what does that do for this offense? They're not going to ever get any better right now. If they're going to continue to stumble here in 2023, you're going to move into 2024 without any confidence, without any progression. And is that where you want to be? I don't think so. I think if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers, you need to regroup, get a better game plan and fight. And I think that is what shows the Steeler way. We talked about that. Ben Roethlisberger on his channel. Other Steelers greats talking about how this locker room has lost the Steeler way. And if you go and slide for the rest of this season and take those losses, I think you're going to really, really lose the Steeler way. I think the Steeler way and what they're talking about is fighting in the faces of adversity and trying to figure it out. And I think if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers, you try to figure this thing out. And you try to fight and you try to get better on all three phases of the football. And I think if the Steelers don't do that, I think if they lay down and die, you're really, really losing that Steelers culture. You're really putting it to bed officially if you do that. You're just crushing it. All that history, all that time that these other NFL greats, Steeler greats, Hall of Famers have taken the time to build this up throughout the years, decades, what are you going to do? Just lay down and die and destroy it all in one season here in 2023? I think it's a bad move. And then some are saying, yeah, it may get Mike Tomlin fired. Why would you want to fire Mike Tomlin, first of all? I don't think firing him is the right answer. You have him under contract until 2024. Why wouldn't you trade him? If you're the ownership group, and you know that you're moving on from Mike Tomlin, a trade would be the only logical solution. And that would get you another high draft pick. Another first round draft pick. I can almost guarantee that. It may not be in the top 10. 
It may not even be in the top 20, but you're probably going to get another first-round draft pick for a coach like Mike Tomlin. The media has put him on a pedestal, guys. We talked about it in yesterday's episode. The media has elevated him to a godlike status in the NFL, and it's absolutely an absurd thing to do because he's not that. But maybe a change of scenery helps Mike Tomlin and he gets back to that early type Mike Tomlin uh, career where he he won games, he won Super Bowls, won playoff games. Well, won a Super Bowl, not Super Bowls. But he appeared in Super Bowls too. Maybe that gets him back to that. Maybe a trade helps Mike Tomlin more than it helps the Steelers. I don't know. Maybe it helps them both. But if you're the Steelers, just letting him walk away for nothing is an absolute waste of time. And you've been dealing with his mediocrity for years, for many years. You might as well get something for it and leave him. Uh, Mike Tomlin should leave you a parting gift. That's how we'll put it, a parting gift. Get another top draft pick and go in there and find a center in another tackle to play opposite of Broderick Jones and fix what the major problem is on this football team. And that is the offensive line. We say it every show that the offensive line is a big, big problem. And there is no quarterback on this team going to be able to stand behind that offensive line and deliver quality play. It's just not going to happen, guys. This offensive line has not gelled. Last season, you saw that offensive line get better throughout the year. And that enabled Kenny Pickett to reel off some wins, have some fourth quarter comebacks, stay somewhat healthy in the latter part of the year. But now you've seen this offensive line not gel at all, not one bit. They've just continually got worse. The center play is horrible. You have just bad play across the offensive line. You have one bright spot, and that's Broderick Jones. He's young. He shows progression. He plays with fire, plays with energy, and I think you need to build on that. You have a guy in Spencer Anderson I think you need to continue to look at that's on the roster. A young guy that I think can play a lot of different positions on the offensive line and really help you. So why not go out and try to find that quality next generation of Steelers center? A Mike Webster, a Pouncey, a Dermonte Dawson. Why not try to find that in this year's draft? Well, 2024's draft. Why not try to find another tough, hard-nosed tackle in this draft? And not just uh, grab for straws later in the draft and try to just find somebody, find a gem uh, that's way down low, fourth, fifth round. Try to pour maybe some major draft capital into that offensive line. Because I think if you're the Steelers, that's where your major problem starts. That's why your offense stalls immediately. You can't get anything going. There's no way to get anything going when the uh, pass rush is breathing down your throat. It's really hard for the run game to get going. And then you couple that with the vanilla offense. It's really hard to overcome. And the Pittsburgh Steelers haven't yet this season uh, really been able to overcome it. They did a little bit in the beginning part. They were fighting, had a decent record. They got to the 7-5, 7-6 area. They still had good hope. But yet they weren't elite. But they were in the the picture, had hope. They could control their own destiny. And then you started seeing the injuries to Kenny Pickett. The bad play of Mitch Trubisky. People yelling for a third string quarterback to come in. What have we gotten to here in Pittsburgh? When people are screaming for the play of the third string quarterback and acting like he's going to be some savior of the franchise, we have hit an all-time low. It's horrible. Then you have Mike Tomlin come into the press conference after the game in Indianapolis talking about, it's horrible. We're going to make changes. Where was that fire when you had a good chance to make the playoffs? Where was that fire when you had uh, everything set in front of you? Why all of a sudden now, when you're 7-7, seven and seven, do you decide that that's the way you're going to approach this thing? And I don't think Mike Tomlin fired Matt Canada. I think that was an Art Rooney thing. But, but hey, that's for another day. That's for another debate. But literally, where was that fire, Mike Tomlin? Today, Mike Tomlin holds his press conference today, and we're going to find out what changes he was talking about. He said there's going to be changes. They won't continue to play that way. They won't continue to wheel that type of product out there. Well, you've said that, I think, before this season, but he said it with some energy Saturday in Indianapolis. So does that make a difference? Is Mike Tomlin really going to come out here and show some change? Is he going to start Mason Rudolph this, this Sunday against the Bengals? Is that the right choice?
Guys, Mason's a third-string quarterback for a reason. I keep telling you guys that. He's not a starter in this league. Somebody would have scooped him up if he had any type of potential, guys. He wouldn't have come crawling back to the Steelers to sit on the bench and be the third-string emergency quarterback. He just wouldn't have if there was other options for Mason. Yeah, we haven't seen him in a while. But what does that tell you? Lack of reps, lack of time under center, lack of uh, game speed knowledge. Do you think for one second he's going to come in and be able to just fire on all cylinders and be some great savior? Maybe he gets lucky for a game or so. Maybe. But that'd be about it. The game speed's far too fast to sit the bench all the time and not be in there to be used to that game speed. Has enough time passed for Kenny Pickett to be able to play. He got this, what, surgery on December 4th area? Here we sit around December 18th. It's been roughly two weeks. The timetable's usually two to six weeks when you get that surgery. That's a big gap. Is he going to be good enough to be able to play? He got the surgery so they could accelerate the healing process for Kenny Pickett in hopes to get him back because they know they have nothing in Mitchell Trubisky. And I think they sent that message to Mitchell Saturday and said, hey, buddy, this is it. Whenever you put Mason Rudolph in uh, in the last two minutes of the game, I think you were basically telling him this is it. Or was it a scare tactic by Mike Tomlin to say, hey, dude, we'll put him in. You got to play better. Will Mitchell Trubisky start this Sunday? I think it'll be Mason Rudolph. I think that that's really the only major change you can make unless you make some changes on that offensive line. What do you have to lose now? People say it's too late in the season to make those types of drastic changes on the offensive line. But what do you have to lose? You're the same people that's calling for the play of a third-string quarterback. Get real. I mean, come on. We have to be real with ourselves. Let's talk about the real things that are happening with this football team. And making changes on the offensive line and moving pieces around ain't going to kill you. It isn't going to hurt you. You play like shit now. What's it matter? And I get that, that that works for the same thing with Mason Rudolph. You play like shit now at the quarterback position. What's it going to hurt to see Mason Rudolph? And I think you're right. Let him play if that's the case. If you're really making that type of drastic change and you're going to move some pieces around and you're going to take a real swing at this thing to finish with a 10-7 and seven record and try to make the playoffs, then so be it. Do whatever. I, I'm all for it. But I think if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers, you need to be realistic. And if Kenny Pickett can play, you need to play Kenny Pickett because at least he takes care of the football. I don't think you should go to a third-string quarterback unless you have to. And I think changes across the offensive line wouldn't kill you. And I think the offensive line would be the easier part other than quarterback. I think making changes on the offensive line wouldn't be as drastic as putting a third-string quarterback into play. I mean, that's just my opinion on that. But you guys tell me what you think. Should the Pittsburgh Steelers continue to slide? Put that in the comments and let me know what you think about that. Or should the Pittsburgh Steelers rise up and continue to fight for that Steeler way, that so-called Steeler way? Should they continue to push toward uh, making the playoffs? Is there still a chance for this football team at 7-7? Seven and seven? And mathematically, yes, they're in the 10th seed right now. They could still come out, beat the Bengals, beat the uh, Ravens, and beat the Seahawks, and really uh, make a push for this thing. And things uh, can happen. Teams can lose around them. And before you know it, they could be back up in that 5th, 6th seed of the playoffs. They could. And so what if they go get their ass kicked in the first round? At least they fought. At least they tried to build some confidence within that building, within that offense, in that defense even. At least they tried and didn't just flop. Because I think when you get into that category of just flopping, you're trying to be teams like the Carolina Panthers, uh, shitty teams like that, guys. Teams that never win. Teams that are always bad. You're getting into like Cleveland Brown territory there, my friends. Uh, I'm just saying, and the Browns have really come on. They're playing great football. They look like a good, solid football team right now. They beat the Steelers. The Steelers beat them once this season. So they are definitely an improved, uh, much better football team, and I'm hoping that um, they continue not to look like clowns in the NFL and continue their progression because I think it's only good for the AFC North, good for football. Do I want to see him beat the Steelers? Absolutely not. But I'm just saying, I think it's a good thing that the Browns are starting to overcome some of their adversity. But if you're a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, you shouldn't wish for your football team to continue to lose. You shouldn't be so negative. 
Fight with your team, man. Have fun watching this team. I know it's hard right now when they lose every week. But let's continue to try to look and find some bright spots with this football team and see what happens. See what happens with these last three games as they roll the dice and see where they can end up at the end. Who cares if you're not the 15th or 16th pick in the NFL draft? Maybe you're the 20th because you tried to win. Maybe you're the 21st. Does it really matter all that much? I don't think so. But you guys let me know what you think, where this team should be. Should they continue to slide, or should they, should they uh, fight for what they uh, know, that Steeler way? What do you guys think? Put that in the comments. Let me know. Also, like the video, share the videos, and if you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel, and I truly appreciate that. Um, big things keep are going to keep happening here at the channel. We're going to keep adding more content, keep adding more shows. So, um, good stuff, man. And uh, until next time, peace.